The major effect of testosterone is to make effort feel good. That's what testosterone does. It has other effects too, right? Reproductive effects, androgenizing parts of the body, etc. But it makes effort feel good. The testosterone molecule is synthesized from cholesterol. Cholesterol can either be made into cortisol, a stress hormone, or testosterone, but not both. So you have a, a limited amount of cholesterol and it gets diverted towards stress or towards test or this pathway where effort feels good. Mm -hmm. That's the pathway you want to get into. But the real question is, are you enjoying what you're doing? If you can just convince yourself, or ideally, if you can just enjoy yourself, you are going to maintain or maybe even increase testosterone stores, which will make effort feel good. And to me, aside from neuroplasticity, where everything becomes automatic after this experience, to me, that's the holy grail. When effort feels good, life just gets way better. And we're not talking about achieving the reward. I'm not talking about the end of this thing. I'm talking about the process of it feeling really good. So it is the case that increases in testosterone promote competitive and foraging type behaviors in, in humans and in non-human mammals. But it's also true that competition itself can increase androgens such as testosterone. I wanna repeat that competitive environments themselves can increase testosterone. Now, some people have come to the conclusion that if you win, your testosterone goes up, and if you lose, your testosterone goes down. And to some extent, that's true, but that's not a direct effect on the gonads. That's actually mediated by the neuromodulator dopamine. We talked about dopamine in the episode on motivation and drive, and dopamine and testosterone have a remarkable interplay in the body. Dopamine is actually released in the brain in ways that has the pituitary, this gland that sits over the roof of your mouth, release certain hormones that then go on to promote the release of more testosterone. And indeed, winning promotes more dopamine and later more testosterone. However, in the short term, just competing increases testosterone independent of whether or not you win or lose. Nose breathing in wakefulness and in sleep promotes all sorts of positive things related to not just cosmetics, but also the improvement of gas exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the body. And as well, it can modify levels of different neurotransmitters and neuromodulators in ways that positively can impact hormones. So believe it or not, being a nasal breather and avoiding being a mouth breather can actually positively impact hormones and in particular the hormones testosterone and estrogen. Although the way that it does that is by making you a better sleeper, which allows you to produce more testosterone and the appropriate amounts of testosterone and estrogen. But it does that in part through indirect mechanisms because deep sleep supports the gonads, the ovaries and, and the testicles. What does this all mean? This means we have to be breathing properly. It almost sounds kind of, uh, you know, uh, like kind of new agey, like, oh, you have to breathe properly, to get your hormones right. But no, you have to breathe properly to get your breathing and sleep right so that your sleep can actually be deep enough and you're not entering apnea states. And then that will support gonad function. And the positive effects of getting breathing right on these hormones, testosterone and estrogen are dramatic and wonderful. For most people who are kind of recreational athletes or exercisers, Learn to be a nasal breather, it has positive cosmetic effects, it reduces apnea, it offloads more carbon dioxide, it increases lung capacity, it dilates the sinuses, and it prevents apnea in sleep. So unless you have severe apnea and you need the CPAP, nas becoming a nasal breather can have all sorts of positive effects by reducing cortisol, reducing apnea, and indirectly raising testosterone and estrogen in the proper ratios. Viewing bright light within the first hour of waking, whether or not it's from artificial light or ideally from sunlight, has these powerful effects on sleep and wakefulness. But we have to return to this if you want to understand how light can impact hormones because hormones, light and dopamine have a very close knit relationship. So much so that your light viewing behavior can actually have a direct effect on hormone levels and fertility. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and libido. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and your ability to heal quickly. But what I'm talking about is viewing light with your eyes because the scientific literature on this are robust and they extend back several decades. And yet I think most people don't really understand how powerful this relationship is between light, dopamine, 
hormones and all the great things that the sex steroid hormones do when they're available in your body in the proper ratios. Okay, so we've talked about breathing. We've talked about light. Let's talk about a third element that there seems to be some excitement about lately uh, for other reasons, but that can actually have some pretty profound influences on hormone levels, and that's heat and cold. There's a lot of interest in using cold as a way to stimulate testosterone. Believe it or not, that and things like ice baths and cold showers can have positive effects on the sex steroid hormones, both testosterone, mainly in males, and estrogen, mainly in females. And you might say, wait, I thought cold makes the reproductive axis kind of shut down a bit or reduces testosterone and estrogen. But it turns out it's not actually the cold that's having these effects in people. Things like the ice bath, cold showers, cold water swims, these um, ice underwear or whatever they are. I can't believe that these actually exist, but um, they do exist. What happens is there's a rebound in vasodilation after cooling. So cooling causes vasoconstriction. And then after the cooling, there's a rebound vasodilation and there's more infusion of blood into the gonads. Let's talk about how exercise in its various forms, weight training, endurance work, weight training to failure or less intense weight training can impact testosterone levels. But I wanna remind you that we're talking about testosterone both in males and females. And based on what you know from earlier in the episode, testosterone can have numerous positive effects in both males and females, provided they're in optimal range. So if you look on the web, people say, oh, you know, testosterone is increased by weight training. You wanna do the big, heavy compound movement, squats and deadlifts and chins and things of that sort. But what about the scientific studies? Like what's the actual basis for this? Because if you just take a step back and look at this from the perspective of a scientist, you'd say, okay, what is a squat? A squat is loading up a bunch of uh, weights on a bar and then you know sitting down essentially and standing up over and over again. Um, what's a deadlift? It's lifting heavy weights from the ground. Why would that increase testosterone, right? This is what's often not discussed in the weight training or even the exercise science community. What, what would actually stimulate the release of testosterone from the adrenals and or testes? And which one is it? Adrenals or testes or both? Heavy weight training. So this is weight training where the, the sets are done with anywhere from, you know, kind of one to eight rep range. So this translates differently depending on ratio of muscle fiber type and so forth. What you find in general is that weight training with heavy loads, so anywhere from one rep maximum to somewhere in the, you know, six to eight rep repetition range in males or females increases testosterone significantly. And it does it for about a day, sometimes up to 48 hours. The engagement of the neurons that recruit high threshold motor units in muscle when moving heavy loads, but not to failure, that has to provide some sort of feedback signal either to the gonad to produce more testosterone or is increasing the activity of receptors in the body.